So maybe Emma want to start with you. Um, mm. A little bit about you. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Where do I start? There's so many hats. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but in relevance to the book, yeah. um, I'm an architect, I'm um, a director at Design Source, which is a firm of uh, architects and interior designers. And uh, um, now I'm an author. <laughs> and I'm just the immediate past president of the Architectural Association of Kenya. I'm also passionate about education, so in my other life, um, um, we are part of a school called Kyoto School. I'm a mom of three, under nine, and yeah. So why do you care so much about, um, about housing and design? Mm. Well, in terms of housing, it's, it's, it's um, quality of, of, of life, like um, building has such an impact on, uh, on so much, on mental health, on physical health, um, on, on people's well-being as a whole, from children to adults and uh, old age. So um, good building is good life in a sense. So um, I, I see this as our contribution to hopefully improving, um, you know, urban and just generally the built environment and, how, and the output we have in Kenya. And in a way, that way also improve then people's um, lives. Robin, I, I know you from your, from your days in uh, KPDA. Yes. Yeah. Um, how was that experience? Um, and did it help in shaping the inspiration for this? Picked up on it. <laughs> very, very keenly. Um, actually, it, it was um, sitting at Kenya Property Developers Association and seeing that while they're, uh, they're, it's a membership organization and many of the top developers in the country are part of that association. It's a peer, volunteer, voluntarily people participate in that association. There's no regulatory requirement to participate um, in that association. But so if there's, own, if there's a, a group that are voluntarily participating, there are many other buildings that are being developed by people that are not in this small group of people. So then it begs the question, um, what, you know, do we know that they are developing in the same, in the, in the right um, and, and prudent ways of development? We know that in many areas that they're not. I'm sure we'll talk about that many of these buildings don't have professionals working with them. Um, are, and so we've, we see building collapses, collapsing, we see um, the quality of life being degraded because of the design actually has an impact, as Emma said. So we can see the quality of life being compromised in so many ways. And so um, for me it was thinking, well, how do we reach more people that are considering to build, that are building, that they actually have this information in a um, comprehensive completely transparent, open source method or, and so that they can say, well, actually, what should I be doing? What should I be considering? I saw it be done. Oh, I didn't even know I needed that. You mean this could elevate the effectiveness of my development? It could elevate the return of, of, of investment that I could get on this this project? So that's that's that was really the motivation. Um, Emma, mm -hmm. how has the journey been? Um, I know writing a book is not easy. Mm -hmm. um, okay. As you mentioned, you wear so many hats. Yes. Um, so how was the journey? Yeah, it's it's pretty much like building as well. You know, where <laughs> you start out and you have this vision, and but you have all these people, and you have to coordinate them and. Um, plan with them and many times you're you know you're, you're pulling out you're, you're coordinating a team just similar to building so has had its challenges in terms of but, but for the most part it's been a wonderful journey just putting in seeing everything coming together having everyone's input and seeing the final product has been quite quite fulfilling um, and now we're gonna write a book on how to write a book <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you picked a lot of yes. yeah 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 I think to add on to that, I think Emma and I have kind of grown a little bit more empathetic for developers because, you know, while it is a book and, you know, it, it won't physically collapse, you know, but we are, we do kind of, we have, been able, we have been able to say, wow, I'm sure this is exactly what a developer has thought, if you will, you know, where you say, yes, we're, we're, we're breaking ground next week, no, three months from now, <laughs> three months from now, because maybe there is something that um, you underestimated the time that it would take or didn't calculate people's life um, 
issues coming up and so you have to make room and put that into the timeline um, or are you thinking oh my gosh you mean I have to get an ISBN how do I do that mm -hmm. so what do I do with are there, is this plain and simple are the regulations known for everyone so we have been growing a little bit of empathy if you will for those that are courageous enough to go and build um, Emma what scares you most when you see how buildings are being put up um, in Nairobi and indeed mm -hmm. in the whole country mm -hmm. what scares you most Wow, many things scare me. <laughs> I think s the most sometimes is um, just the health of the children having to live in those um, conditions uh, with no... And it's not only... It's everywhere, actually. It's, uh, a building is one element of the fabric of a city and, and, and seeing that there's no space for people to, uh, to play. Both Everybody needs to play, uh, adults and children alike, like any, uh, you know, in a sense of recreation. Mm -hmm. So... Um, for me, the scary thing is the impact and, and just the impact, like I had said earlier, both mentally, like a house is such an important thing uh, sentimentally to someone um, that, that it, it concerns me in terms of first, in terms of mental well-being and even physical, you know, seeing some of those buildings literally, not only in terms of ventilation and lighting, but they can and they do collapse on people and people die because of that. So for me, that's the scariest thing that what are we doing to ourselves? What, what are we um, going to have to deal with 20, 30 years from now with the children who have had to be brought up in, 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 you know, in some of these, um, in, some, in some buildings? Um, and then it scares me to lose a little bit sometimes of the character and the green that we, we have in Nairobi. Um, so I think that's also scary for me when I see things changing so fast without so much thought in terms of... Um, um, you know, that whole balance of green and concrete and seeing even a place like Kilimani that's very dear to both of us, uh, um, slowly converting to a concrete jungle and there is no, there are no green spaces and that concerns me, um, yeah, in the sense of the quality of life, yeah, yeah. Robin, um, how would you summarize this book, you know, in a nutshell, in terms of, if I'm wondering whether I should get this book or not, yeah. mm. um, what can I expect from this book? Yeah, well, we, um, I think we aptly call it the Real Estate Developers Toolkit, um, and that is a summary, you can say. So we, we want this book to be um, a developer's one-stop shop that they, you know, they say they will read it three times and then consider developing. <laughs> so it's almost like any good tailor, you know, measure three times and then cut. And so we want to see this book on a site where a developer can talk to his or her people on the site and say, ah, look at this, this thing says we should be doing this. We want to make certain that we are at the highest standards. We want to see this book on board, boardroom tables, that it is the point of reference, that when people are thinking about making this decision to develop, they say, oh, where's the book? Um, I think they have a chapter. <laughs> I think they have a chapter on decision making. Um, it's at the family dining room table when that family is saying, you know, we have some property there. It, now it's time for us to develop. We want them to say, somebody to have the presence of mind to say, we've heard of a book um, that we, they say is the real estate developer's toolkit. Family, can we all read this book together and then we come for our first meeting and walk through and ask ourselves, are we ready? Because we have those questions in there of the things that we're saying, take into consideration now, in advance as much as possible. What's the intent of building? Can that intent be, built, um, be achieved by purchasing? You know, everybody doesn't have to build, if you will. Is the intent to get a return? Are there many ways to getting that return? Yes. If you're taking the development um, road, know that development has an impact on families, it has an impact on companies, it has an impact on one's own financial um, stability for at least the duration of that development. Are you ready? Do you have a nest egg that can deal with any of the challenges that are gonna come ahead? Do you really know the state of financing that's available? Are you ready to provide that financial mix, if you will, to see this project through? We see so many projects that are stalled um, or don't even finish completion because along the way, they weren't able to meet that challenge, if you will, to finish it. And so we just wanna give people as much as possible the full view of it. 
um, just so people can start to make in some of those questions from an from an um, informed view, not an emotional view, uh, not something for, as a badge of honor, if you will, not something that's an ego driven. We want um, you to actually say, is this something that really is going to further some of those goals? And get that clear for yourself, because the road ahead will not be. <laughs> 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 but but the, you know what do they say the, um, the 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 spoils go to the one that favors the brave, if they say <laughs> it, it it does favor the brave, and we really do honor those that do take that. It it is a courageous step, um, but it is it is there are going to be some yeah. some challenges. Yeah, uh in terms of, um, I know you have been, you have been, uh, you have been involved in uh, development, you know, as, as a designer, mm. as an architect. Mm. What are some of the risks that you've seen in, in projects mm. that this book, you know, seeks to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, provide relevant information mm -hmm. to, to help them address mm. or sort of navigate? Uh, there are so many at each and every stage. Um, uh, one of the biggest, of course, is always financing. There are very many assumptions, uh, uh, people going with hunches, and, and it's almost a scientific, because it's, it's involving money, it's almost a scientific um, process you're going through, and people not figuring that out and getting stuck along the way and causing so much distress emotionally, financially, to, to developers who've not thought of the full cycle yeah, in that sense. So that's one big one for, in terms of people moving sometimes um, just on the basis of a hunch, no putting up a hotel somewhere and you didn't do your basic feasibility study, is this hotel going to be viable in this area? Do I have demand for it? Who's going to take it up? I mean, there are people who do succeed when, without, um, but there's the fewer <laughs> than they are, there are the fewer ones. Yeah. So um, that's one challenge that so sometimes crunching the numbers at the beginning, looking and, and seeing is a market made, not building for the sake of building. I think Kenyans have this sentimental attachment to building sometimes, um, and they're just going to build. And uh, yes, it, 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 uh, and it, there's a quote in the book that real estate is one of the best in terms of returns on your investment. It's there, it's, it's, you, know, uh, you can see it, ETC, but um, uh, some thought into that, and sometimes we've seen that lacking, that people then focus on the building itself in terms of design and the architecture, but have not really thought about the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So what other risk um, does the book help to solve? Yeah, I think in understanding your the contract and the contractor and the players. So knowing your professionals, who they are, what their qualifications should be when you're getting on an engineer, you're getting on an architect, what what do you need to look for? So that process of engaging your professional, but also very critical is engaging your contractor, who's the person who's going to execute, and a little bit of you know, the models of how um, you can build in terms of a full contract to a contractor, um, labor or, or, or where you supply materials and the advantages and the pros and cons of each one of this um, so that you have a full picture and you're in the know from, um, from the very beginning, even as you're making decisions on how you're going to engage with different people. Um, what are the qualifications that you need to have your contractor, does your contractor need to have NCA registration and the like, just little um, things that, uh, check boxes that you help you to ensure that you get the right people um, because there are all sorts of people out there and really when you're putting so much money because real estate uh, investment is not cheap, you want it to be in the best hands. Robin, um, how about marketing? Do you see developers doing enough to, to market their, their projects and, and do you have a chapter in the book that addresses that whole issue because you can have a good, a good product yes. but if you don't have a solid plan to get it to the market, yeah. um, which of course starts with feasibility studies, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, is there something in the book about that? Yes, we actually um, felt it was important enough to have its own chapter dedicated to it. Uh, it's actually on marketing and property management. And um, although the, the book has chapters and the chapters are linearly laid out, we aren't necessarily saying that that's actually the way that you should address each issue, if you will. So even as she talked about financing being important, it's at the end of the book, um, but we've we put it there just because we've gotten some feedback about people's thoughts about jumping right into money conversations. And so while its, it's placement doesn't actually give uh, is it doesn't equate to its importance, if you will. So neither does the, the location of the marketing um, in our book also, because it's toward the end. Marketing is one of those things that's also straight from the beginning. 
and it's one of those things that's iterative. You are always keeping in touch and you're always agile enough to adjust and, and make any corrections along the way. Because you know, when you're in touch with your target market, you've, have, you've identified from your feasibility study, actually who would want this, um, what are people looking for, um, is, how many of this type of thing is in the market, what are some of the projections and future, um, future indicators that are going, if you, what are the styles and preferences of the market right now, or what are some that are on the horizon, what have been some of the challenges of developers right now, how do I, um, how do I curb, you know, making the same mistakes that they've made? That's a lot of information that you want to compile and it goes into even the crafting of the project, if you will. And we, we say don't wait until you are putting the last door on the project and then pick up the phone with the marketer. Okay, it's ready. <laughs> Come do your, do your thing. At that point, it's really too late. And why is it too late? Because we've, we've seen so many people that have developed something that's not sellable. And so it's way too late for a developer to have a um, kind of, if you will, like a signature project. I'm doing this, I'm uh, my maiden voyage into development, and I'm talking to nobody. <laughs> I'm talking to nobody, and the world is going to love it. Well, it's, it's, it's just probably um, not going to be as successful and effective as you'd like it to be, and, and you will probably end up having a, pro a development project that sits. So, it's tricky and um, it's dynamic and it takes boldness, it takes creativity, but you can't be fearful and you can't wait until the last minute. You have to do that thinking straight from the beginning. Um, now, Emma, um, this book, if I wanted to, if I want to get it now, where do I get it? Well, we are we're going to have it in um, book, bookstores, a prestige bookshop. Bookstop in Yaya, and you can get it from rafflebooks.com, so you can have it delivered to your house wherever you are. Yes. Uh, are we going to have a launch for the book anytime soon? Absolutely. Um, Mid June 20, 20th of yeah, June. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it, by, by, the, by mid June, you'll be you can have it in your hand, and we want you know we want everybody to be looking out for it. Yeah, look out for it. So our social media um, platforms. Um, our building in Kenya, um, so K-E. Building in K-E. Yeah, that's our social media. Yeah. So people can follow us, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and, uh, and keep posted on, on, on when the launch is. And uh, also very little tips and uh, bits of pieces from the book, even as we anticipate um, in launching the book. Yeah. We tried, we tried not to have the book be just completely technical, if you will, just technical, do this, take a left, take a right. We tried to bring different aspects that makes it, puts it in context. So we have um, something called trends in there. So we have some trends that all throughout the book that contextualizes what's happening in the built environment in this sector right now, be it the housing levy, be it the, fine, um, the, the, the refinance um, fund that's, that's um, being put together, being um, our, our position in terms of the Jones, Loans, Jones Lang LaSalle's Transparency Index, where does Kenya fall inside of that? Ease of doing business, where does Kenya fall in that? And how, what are the steps to getting permits? And how do we compare county to county? What are the different steps and the methods that each county has? So we do have something that we call trends in the, in the book that we also think that is, uh, that will contextualize the book. Um, we also have something called Two Cents, that it is something you'll see in the book people will find that both of us have over combined of 25 years in, the, in this profession. And we've seen a lot. <laughs> we've seen a lot as an urban planner here, as, um, as an architect, as um, chairing organizations, as executives in different um, organizations. We've seen a lot. And so we have some two cents inside of that. And it comes from love and it comes from a little bit of humor also, but to just say, okay, this is our two cents about the whole matter. Um, what are the other two? We also have, we interviewed a lot of developers yeah. in the process of this and just telling, uh, finding out what they, their pain points were, what they yeah. learned, how, you know, w uh, what lessons they learned 
So a voice to other developers and letting them know, okay. Uh, so we have a, a couple of quotes and uh, anecdotes from other developers um, on lessons they've learned or things that they've gone through that they'd really like other people to know um, so that they don't have to fall into the same traps as, or, you know, holes that they fell into. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in, in conclusion, so um, what makes you happiest about this book? Mm. I think I think the impact that it'll have, you know, um, I don't think there's been anything like this before. Um, so having that in people's hands, just the information gathered and put together from different people, the information is out there, but just someone who's packaged it together for people and, and something that they can follow, but also um, having an impact in terms of how people should develop um, following, you know, general rule and rule of law in a sense in terms of what what, what what's the right thing to do so hopefully uh, in a sense uh, will have impact in terms of then what uh, how developers develop uh, hopefully f people will have more successful pro projects because of our uh, of our book but also that will have an impact in Kenya uh, and the built environment yeah along the same same vein that yeah the developer it's all compiled but also that we hope that the developer will go back to the duty bearers um, and say, hey, you're supposed to do this, that, and the other. So we also are impacting and calling on the duty bearers to do their work. Yeah, yes, exactly. That people can come back and actually say, hold on a second. It looks like a step has been, we've misstepped, if you will. Uh, let's try to get this back on track. Because I think that when the information is in cloak and dagger and it's hard to, to really um, get, a, get access to it, or, or if somebody can be like, well, they're not, why should I? But if this book says we all are going to move to proper development, let's hold each other accountable, everybody that's in this space, then it brings things out of the shadows, it brings it out of the dark, and it's all everyone out in the light, and we can hopefully walk this journey together. I think the other thing I think is just the, you know, just doing it with my, my sister friend here, Emma, writing this book, and the, and the relationship and the, the ability to just, you know, cry with each other, pull each other's hair out, not pull each other's hair out. <laughs> I pull my hair out and she pulls her out. <laughs> but, and to, again, just to say, um, we're doing this. So all, all of those things, you know, the things that are, you know, auxiliary effects, if you will, those things, I think, um, are, are also very, very cher cherished for us. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much. I think okay. uh, for me it has been uh, an eye-opener. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a very engaging and stimulating conversation. Okay. And I look forward to the book launch. Thank um, you. And, and I can't wait to get my hands on the, on the book as well. Thank you. I'm sure uh, there's a lot for me to learn from this because you are in the same space, yes. talking to the same um, target audience. Yeah.